Welcome to Microchips Cryptography Primer. This primer is meant for people without any knowledge of cryptography. If that's you, this is a great place to start learning. In this presentation, we will cover why embedded security is needed, why consider microchip for embedded security, we'll cover authentication, integrity, and confidentiality, we'll cover hashing and its functions in, crypt in cryptography, secret key, also known as symmetric cryptography, public key, also known as asymmetric cryptography. We'll cover ways of spawning session keys, both symmetrically and asymmetrically, and we'll also cover the chain of trust. Let's first talk about why embedded security is needed now more than ever. We have reached a crisis point. Embedded systems are being hacked at an increasingly frequent rate. Please note not only the increasing frequency of attacks, but the scope of these attacks. These hacks impact an enormous number of systems. Notice Blueborn targeted over 8 billion devices. Crack targeted nearly every Wi-Fi connection. Meltdown Inspector targeted every computer. And the forecast for things to come is only worse. Symantec's 2018 Internet Security Threat Report underscored an increase of 600% in IoT attacks. Panda Security reports nearly 300,000 new versions of malware are produced every single day. 48% of US firms have experienced an IoT breach, and that number is expected to grow. It's probably well over 50% by the time you hear this. The costs to those firms averaged about 13% of total revenue. For larger companies, companies with over 2 billion in revenue, it's much worse. The costs could amount to more than $20 million. The costs of a breach go far beyond addressing the vulnerability. There is the potential for loss of valued clients, the costs of business disruption. Agencies are watching. There could be stiff regulatory fines and loss of access and privileges in key markets. And don't forget the cost of litigating this mess. And the costs of a hack don't stop there. Your brand could severely suffer, especially if, if clients are significantly harmed. There could be direct financial losses. Data can be held for ransom. The hackers could ga gain direct access to financial accounts. And this doesn't apply to only you. A hack of your system could enable these financial attacks directly on your clients. What should we learn from all the security breaches in the news? The stories we see in the news on an alarmingly regular basis don't all apply to our embedded market, but many do, like the infamous Mariah DDoS attack on Dyn, which caused major internet platforms and service providers to be unavailable to large swaths of users in Europe and North America. Rather than getting lost in the details of every attack, notice what was common to all these victimized companies. Security wasn't an issue for them until it was a catastrophe. The Federal Trade Commission is the agency which prosecutes companies for breaches which harm the public good. Keep in mind the management of the FTC are political appointees who probably know very little about security. There's only one way to defend your company against an FTC action. It is to follow their recommendations. If you do that, there is very little they can say you did wrong. The FTC recommends a defense in depth strategy, which includes communication layer security, transport layer security, TLS. We can help you harden TLS so secrets upon which the communication keys are based are not remotely accessed by hacks. Application layer security. Ensure the data is secure before it ever reaches the TLS, TLS encrypted stream. Limit the collection of data to that which is truly needed. You are not allowed to collect data just willy-nilly. It must be for a valid reason. Encrypt all data collected while in motion and protect it at rest. Sometimes each record needs to be encrypted individually. This is true for financial and medical records, as an example. Here are just two examples of the FTC going after companies for harming the public good. And finally, a short quote from one of the FTC's staff reports highlighting their belief that security needs to be baked into every system from the very beginning. Let's now talk about security terms we hear regularly. We have cybersecurity, embedded security, and physical security. They are not all the same. Cybersecurity 
is software protection from attacks. It protects the applications and the ecosystem. It is usually an application itself running on the OS of a system. It can be reactive and or proactive. It's usually expensive and needs frequent updates. Embedded security is hardware enforced security at the hardware level, offering hardware protection of keys and crypto primitives. A crypto primitive would be considered authentication, data integrity, key spawning, or a key exchange. It is an immutable hardware enforced me mechanism to prove the identity and genuineness of a device. Embedded security is built into the PCB and firmware of the system. It serves as an anchor to cybersecurity. Without it, cybersecurity has no way of truly telling what is genuine and what is not. Physical security are the measures we take to physically restrict access to a device and its information. Embedded security devices typically have physical security built in. The PCB may have additional physical measures like metal shields and signals which indicate if a case were opened and that sort of thing. How do we achieve security? Well, the first thing we need is knowledge. Typically, we use knowledge from prior experiences on our next projects, but not so with cryptography. Cryptography is not something engineers casually pick up along the way. Engineers who are comfortable with cryptography have deliberately studied it and relatively few engineers are comfortable with cryptography. This is one reason we developed the class you're listening to right now. Next, we need a microcontroller with an immutable boot code. This unchangeable, unhackable portion of firmware will work with the embedded hardware security to authenticate the rest of the code before bootstrapping the system. All secrets as well as the, crypt, the critical crypto primitives of authentication, integrity check, key spawning, key exchange, etc., need to be protected in a persistent, secure environment. If these critical functions resided in a vulnerable space on the micro, a hacker could compromise them so they could authenticate anything. The keys would no longer be necessary. A large portion of any conversation we have with our clients revolves around the ecosystem and infrastructure. Care must be taken that no single corrupted device can compromise the entire ecosystem. If you're viewing this because you have a current need for security, may I suggest you schedule a conversation with a microchip security specialist. We can help you address your specific needs and help you design security in from the very start. Remember, everyone touched by your system expects their secrets will be protected as well. The manufacturer wants to protect their IP and recurring revenue streams, of course. They want to fight cloning, control the number of genuine units built, uh, control supply chain and warranty costs, among other things. They want to protect their brand. Heck, they want to keep building their brand and, and being known as a secure product is one of the very good ways of doing that. Just make sure you're not just protecting yourself. You need to protect your clients as well. Make sure your system protects their privacy and their personal information. If your ecosystem includes service providers, make sure their value is also protected. When developing a security solution, all of these things need to be considered. A system which protects the recurring revenue and reduces supply chain cost, but does not protect its customers and service providers, can put the brand in just as much jeopardy as doing nothing. Here are some use case examples. When we present directly to one of our clients, they usually know what they're trying to protect. But when we give this presentation as, at a seminar or another general event, we are often asked, where is this stuff used? Here's a brief and very incomplete list of applications. Jumping to the last two bullets, secure boot, secure firmware update, and unique messaging. These are considered table stakes in security. There's nothing more important than assuring your system is running genuine, unmodified code. And in any system, messages need to be unique so they cannot be replicated by an adversary. Message replay attacks are one of the most common and most easily thwarted attacks. Microchip's solution for all this? We offer training and easy to use solutions with the following traits. They are simple enough, so you do not need a high level of knowledge. They work well within your manufacturing flow. 
Our solutions are elegantly simple and inexpensive, yet we offer world-class levels of security. And very important, we have specialists around the world ready to help you. Why listen to us? Because we are a trusted and experienced team. We were the first company to enter into the chip level security market. We invented Keylock back in the late 1980s. Its rolling code quickly became the de facto standard for car entry and garage door openers. In the late 1990s, IBM needed a way to secure notebook computers. They had contracts, which insisted the data be protected if the notebook was lost or stolen. IBM came to us to develop a crypto ASIC device to lock down these computers. Shortly thereafter, IBM formed the Trusted Computer Platform Alliance, the TCPA, with Compaq, Hewlett Packard, Intel, and Microsoft. That eventually became the TCG, Trusted Computer Group, we know today. The goal of this group was to create an industry standard for chip level security for use in computers. The crypto ASIC we developed for IBM was the natural starting point for that standard. We worked with the TCPA to create the first trusted platform module, the TPM. TPMs are now in all computers. Windows 10 will not work without one. We were the first to win common criteria certification for the standardized device. We continued innovating to supply our industry with security enabling devices. We invented crypto memory and crypto RF when the printer industry was losing its recurring revenue from people refilling ink cartridges, we responded with an authentication device. Coincidentally, that device was also perfect for IoT. We led the charge to service that market as well. We continued our history of innovation by introducing the first devices to provide hardware-based security for cloud services. And we led the effort in automotive. As cars become smarter, more potential attacks are possible. We are working with the leading automobile manufacturers to enable completely secure communications between components within the car. If you're an embedded design engineer, please consider attending the industry premier training event built especially for you. Microchip's master's conference arms design engineers of every level with valuable application information and hands-on training. You will gain the information you need to get up and running as quickly as possible on your new designs. Don't miss this opportunity to attend one of these valuable conferences. They are held around the globe, so one of them should be conveniently located to you. I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching Microchip Channels, and I hope you learned more about embedded security.